What's up, everybody? It's Randy Couture. Wanted to give a shout out to Kian Kimura. You guys can follow his channel for the best MMA content out there. Again, it's Kian Kimura. Give his channel a check out. It's very good. Be well, take care, y'all. Randy the Natural Couture was truly a natural when it came to winning championships. He was the first fighter ever in UFC history to win belts in two different divisions. But with a record of 19 and 11, how good was Randy Couture actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today we're going to be talking about Captain America himself, Randy Couture. His career is hardly recognized today due to his strained relationship with the UFC. And that's due to Randy signing with Bellator as a commentator after his MMA career. So today I want to take a deep dive into his career to really understand how good he actually was. And as always, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. I thank you for your continued support. And your name could join theirs if you become an undisputed member today. Now let's get to it. Randy began his MMA career in May of 1997 where he entered the heavyweight tournament at UFC 13 on three weeks notice as an alternate. He was a 33 year old Greco-Roman wrestler who fought Tony Halema in the semi-finals. He took the fight down immediately and landed a punch before taking Halema's back and securing the rear naked choke. The fight was only 60 seconds which helped Randy recover before fighting Steven Graham in the finals that same night. Like his first opponent, Steven was much larger, but Couture once again took the fight down where he controlled Graham. He almost finished the fight by knees to the head but stopped for some reason which was so funny to me. But then he would get a hold of Steven's back where he finished him off with strikes to the head, thus becoming the heavyweight tournament winner. In October of that year, he fought 19 year old phenom Vitor Belfort. Vitor was the favorite to win as he was also a heavyweight tournament winner and he finished all his opponents by KO or TKO. Early in this fight, the two were feeling each other out on the feet before Belfort ripped Randy's shorts on the takedown attempt. But Couture managed to defend it and begin to pressure Vitor on the feet. In fact, this quickly became the longest fight in Vitor's career. Couture took the fight down to the floor where he began to control Vitor and was close to securing a headlock. And even though he failed to do so, he still maintained top control by throwing punches from above. When Vitor tried to get back up, he ate a bunch of knees. The two engaged in more dirty boxing and even though Vitor showed a lot of heart here, Randy was the fresher fighter and won the exchange that put Vitor to the mat. Couture finished the fight on the ground by strikes and won the upside in his third MMA fight. The win earned him a title shot against UFC heavyweight champion Maurice Smith. Maurice started aggressive early by connecting with his strikes and backing up Randy. But eventually Couture took the fight down where he controlled Maurice and landed ground and pound. This is how most of the fight went down during the 21 minute duration. Smith tags Randy on the feet then gets taken down where Couture imposes his wrestling skills. By the time the fight ended, Randy was awarded the decision and became the UFC heavyweight champion. Couture was expected to defend his belt against former King of Pancrase, Boss Rutan. But instead he decided to leave the UFC and sign with Vale Tudo Japan, which ultimately stripped Randy of his title. Couture made his debut in October of 1998 where he fought former Shuto heavyweight champion, Ensign Inui. Randy immediately went for the takedown. When the fight got back up, the two engaged in dirty boxing before Couture secured another takedown. But Inui would then secure an armbar that forced Randy to tap. The fight was only 99 seconds long. And this was Couture's first and last appearance in Valet Tudo Japan before entering fellow Japanese MMA promotion, Rings. Randy fought Mikael Elukian where he looked dominant early with his dirty boxing, knees, and denying the takedown by threatening with a guillotine choke. Couture eventually secured the takedown and almost took Mikhail's back before they almost fell out of the ring. That was the other thing. Randy's style of fighting in the clinch is way more effective in a cage than it was in a ring. Anyways, he still found success with his dirty boxing until Alukian secured a kimura. But due to it being at the edge of the ring, the ref moved it to the middle in the exact same kimura position which I found absolutely comical as when the fight proceeded, Randy immediately tapped. Following this loss, he took a break from MMA to focus on wrestling. He came back a year and a half later to fight in the ring's Kings of Kings tournament. He fought Jeremy Horton in the opening round. The two immediately engaged in dirty boxing where Couture was the aggressor by backing Jeremy to the ropes. But in general, he found more success on the feet which forced Horn to attempt submissions. At one point, Randy got taken down but he was able to power the reversal and attempt to grab a leg, but to no success. The remainder of the fight saw Couture outstrike Horn who continued to look for the submission. But it seemed like Randy was way stronger and he ended up winning the fight by unanimous decision. In the second round of the tournament, Couture fought Ryushi Yanagasawa. Ryushi attempted to take down early before being stuffed and controlled on the ground by Couture who threw heavy shots and attempted a guillotine and an Americana. Randy would go on to attempt an array of submissions that had him winning the fight regardless of being on his back. It was some impressive grappling from Couture and he would continue that in the second round when he took the fight down immediately and was dominant on the ground just like he was in round 1. This performance gave Randy the unanimous decision and the chance to fight in the quarterfinals on February in 2001. But prior to the fight, Couture was given the opportunity to fight 
UFC heavyweight champion Kevin Randleman at UFC 28. In the first round, Randleman took Randy down immediately and began throwing ground and pound. While on his back, Couture attempted an armbar, but Kevin would win that round and continue the momentum in the second where he began outstriking Randy. But he seemed to have slowed down in the third as Couture battered him with knees before taking him down and mounting him. Randy would go on to finish the fight by strikes and once again become the UFC heavyweight champion. Shout out to Kevin Randleman who showed so much class after this fight by wrapping the belt around Randy's waist. After this quick detour, Couture was back to Japan to fight in the quarterfinals against Tsuyoshi Kosaka. Randy was immediately the aggressor on the feet by pressuring Kosaka with his striking and winning the exchanges when they were dirty boxing. This forced Tsuyoshi to take the fight down and begin to throw heavy ground and pound. But once the fight got back up, Randy's offense was too much and it became worse when Kosaka was unable to secure the takedown. Couture continued to dominate the fight to earn the unanimous decision. He advanced to the semifinals that same night where he fought Valentin Overeem. Valentin was the fresher fighter as he won his semi final match in 45 seconds by armbar, in comparison to Randy who fought for 10 minutes. So Couture immediately went for the takedown, but 56 seconds into the fight, Overeem stood up to be taken down again, but this time he secured the guillotine that forced Randy to tap. This was Randy's final fight for rings before fully committing to the UFC. He came back to defend his belt at UFC 31 against Pedro Hizo who was 11-1 prior to this bout and coming off two straight finishes. The fight started off with Couture clinching Hizo where the two began to dirty box, but in comparison to his other fights where he was the aggressor during these exchanges, Pedro connected with heavy shots in the clinch as well. When the two separated, Randy took Hizo down and began throwing ground and pound for the remainder of the round. But in the second, Pedro began to connect with kicks, punches, and denied Couture's attempts to take the fight down. The momentum was shifting in Hizo's favor. Pedro almost finished Randy before the bell rang. In the third round, Couture bounced back by connecting with punches, his most brutal one being his uppercut. After denying most of Randy's takedowns, Pedro finally went down and ate elbows from the bottom, but he threw some nice punches off his back as well. The action continued in the fourth with both men swinging. Couture tried to take the fight down many times in this round but was mostly denied. He was able to secure one near the end of the round but had a hard time controlling Hizo on the ground. In the final round, both men were going all out on the feet with a couple of takedown attempts from Randy. Near the end of the fight, Pedro connected with a leg kick that dropped Couture and it was a really good way to finish off this close battle which ended up becoming fight of that year. But the judges gave the decision to Randy, which was controversial among the fans. So the UFC set up the rematch between the two for UFC 3. In this fight, Couture was more aggressive from the start with leg kicks, dirty boxing, and a takedown that led to shoulder strikes that cut open Hizo. Round 2 was the same dominance from Randy who continued to find success with the takedown and ground and pound from the top. Pedro landed his most significant strikes in the third round before Randy connected with the right. Pedro would pull guard but it was the beginning of the end. Couture dragged him to the cage and began to throw heavy ground and pound that forced ref John McCarthy to step in. His next title defense was against Josh Barnett at UFC 36. Couture was aggressive early by attempting a takedown. He would finally secure a takedown and begin to throw heavy shots from the top. Randy even attempted an Americana, but Barnett got up only to be in danger of a guillotine. In the second, Couture secured the takedown and controlled Josh for a majority of the round with ground and pound. But Barnett managed to scramble out and begin to connect with ground and pound of his own that ultimately stopped the fight. Josh Barnett became the UFC heavyweight champion, but his reign was short-lived after he tested positive for an anabolic steroid. The UFC stripped him of the belt and cut him from the promotion. Which is wild, cause if this happened today, Couture would have definitely gotten his belt back. But instead he fought for the vacant title against Rico Rodriguez who was 13-1 at the time and was on an absolute tear in the heavyweight division. But Couture came out strong as he was the aggressor with the takedowns and overall ground control for the first three rounds. But the momentum switched in the fourth when Rico was able to secure a takedown of his own and begin to throw ground and pound that tired out Randy. And that would continue in the fifth round when Rodriguez secured another takedown and began throwing elbows with one of them breaking Couture's orbital bone, forcing him to submit and lose the heavyweight championship. Although Randy lost two fights in a row, they were to opponents that had the size advantage over him. So he decided to move down to light heavyweight for the first time in his career. His first fight at 205 was Chuck Liddell with the winner receiving the interim light light heavyweight championship. Chuck was 12-1 and, and regarded as one of the best light heavyweights in the world at that point, which made Couture the underdog for this matchup. In the opening round, the two were feeling each other out on the feet with the biggest action being from Randy who secured two takedowns. In round 2, Couture was winning most of the exchanges on the feet and continued to press forward. He capped the round off with another takedown and more ground and pound. Couture's strength from fighting heavyweights for all these years definitely helped him outpower Liddell. And that's what happened in the third round when Randy continued to outstrike Chuck. He eventually took the fight to the ground where he mounted Liddell and finished him with strikes from the top. Randy Couture became the interim light heavyweight champion which made him the first man to win titles in two weight classes. He went on to fight UFC light heavyweight champion Tito Ortiz in a title unification bout. There was a lot of animosity between the two prior to the fight and T. 
Tito was the favorite as he had just broke the UFC light heavyweight record for most title defenses. Plus he was 28 in comparison to Couture who was 40 years old. Ortiz said he was gonna spank Randy in this fight, but Couture defied the laws of aging by out wrestling Tito who had never been dominated on the ground like that. But like the Chuck Liddell fight, Randy outpowered Ortiz who was unable to get any offense going in this fight. And near the end of the 5th round, Couture would make Tito eat his words by being the one who spanked him. Literally. He would go on to win the unanimous decision and the undisputed light heavyweight championship. Credit to Tito who was disappointed but still wrapped the belt around Randy's waist. In January of 2004, Couture fought Vitor Belfort for a second time. The fight ended in 49 seconds after Vitor grazed Randy's eye with a left hook. Couture began wincing immediately and once the doctor checked on it, ref John McCarthy called off the fight and Belfort became the light heavyweight champion. But the rubber match would go down at UFC 49. It was a dominant showing from Randy who smothered Belfort from the very beginning where he controlled him in the clinch and on the ground after securing the takedown. In round 2, an accidental headbutt caused a cut above Vitor's eye. Randy continued to out-wrestle Vitor in the third round which would also be the final one after doctors looked at the cut prior to round 4 and decided that the fight needed to be stopped. Couture won the light heavyweight championship once again. His first title defense in his second reign was a rematch against Chuck Liddell. The build up to this fight was huge as Randy and Chuck were two of the best light heavyweights in the world. And prior to their fight at UFC 52, the two were coaches on the first season of The Ultimate Fighter which was legendary in itself. But the fight itself was quick. After the two got in a crazy exchange that caused an eye poke to Couture, the fight continued and Chuck connected with a left hand before Randy came rushing in. Liddell countered with a right hand that dropped Couture and ended the fight, lasting a little over two minutes. Randy's next fight was a title eliminator against Mike Van Arsdale who was also a strong wrestler. But Couture out wrestled him through this fight and was constantly looking for the anaconda choke. And in the third round, he finally secured it. He went on to fight Chuck Liddell for a third time at UFC 57. Randy looked good early in the fight by connecting with some shots. But Chuck was able to rock Couture and had him in trouble before Randy secured the takedown. But Liddell popped back up where he was controlled by Randy in the clinch. In the second, Couture was picking his shots and was looking good early until he rushed in and got clipped with the right hand. Chuck connected with more ground strikes before ref John McCarthy stepped in. Following this fight, Randy announced that he was retiring and it was a decision that would have happened regardless of how the fight went. In June of that year, the UFC inducted Couture into the Hall of Fame. But his retirement was short lived when he announced that he was coming back to fight UFC heavyweight champion Tim Sylvia. And the comeback was to a good start after Randy connected with a right hand that dropped Sylvia and the fight looked close to being finished from there. But instead it would go 5 rounds where Couture put on, yet again, another world class performance performance. He took down Silvio where he threw heavy ground and pound. When the fight was back up, he connected with strikes and at the same time was dodging all of Tim's attacks. In contrast to how Randy's power from heavyweight helped him at light heavyweight, his speed from light heavyweight proved to be the reason he was outclassing Sylvia in this fight. After 5 rounds, Randy Couture became the heavyweight championship for a record breaking third time. He was also 43 years old, also a record. His first title defense was against Gabriel Gonzaga who was coming off the upset of a lifetime against Miracle Krokop. The two were able to land shots that hurt each other early, but Randy took the round by securing a couple of takedowns and controlling Gonzaga in the clinch. One of the takedowns broke Gabriel's nose and it started bleeding like crazy. The momentum shifted towards Couture who began winning the exchanges and continued to dirty box Gonzaga against the cage. And that only continued into the third where he secured another takedown that damaged Gabriel's nose even further. It was only a matter of ground strikes before Herb Dean stopped the fight. It was also later revealed that Couture broke his arm by blocking one of Gabriel's kicks, but he still found a way to win. After this loss though, Randy vowed that he was going to sever all ties with the UFC due to management disputes and being paid less than Chuck Liddell who was on a two fight losing streak. He was also upset with the UFC failing to sign Fedor Emelianenko. Regardless, Couture remained as the heavyweight champion through all of this. And after more contract negotiations, Randy came back 50 months later to fight Brock Lesnar at UFC 91. Like Couture's previous opponents, Brock was the bigger fighter. Randy connected early with a nice right, but Lesnar retaliated with an elbow that had Couture in trouble. There was no way Randy could take down the mammoth that was Brock who also possessed wrestling skills. The fight ended in the second when Lesnar connected with the right hand before finishing off the fight with hammer fists. After losing his belt, Couture fought former UFC interim heavyweight champion Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. In the opening round, the two immediately engaged in dirty boxing. Nogueira connected with a combo that dropped Randy. He tried to lock in a Dar's choke but to no success. Credit to Big Nog cause when the fight was on the feet, he ate some heavy shots from Randy but continued to press forward. In fact, the fight quickly became an all out war as the two were swinging without defending themselves. In round 2, Couture secured top position before being reversed by Nogueira who was close to securing an arm triangle choke. Credit to Randy who didn't tap to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black
black belt like Nogueira. When the fight got back up, it was as if the two men couldn't help but get into a slugfest. In the third, Nogueira almost finished the fight when he dropped Randy with a combo, and even though Couture survived, he was being controlled on the ground and eating a lot of strikes. At one point, Nogueira got a hold of Randy's back, but would then be reversed and began eating shots off his back. Yet Nogueira secured one last reversal before the fight ended. He would go on to win the unanimous decision. Following this two-fight skid, Randy went back down to 205. His first fight back was against Brandon Vera, where his game plan was to close the distance in the clinch and attempt to take the fight down as Brandon was the taller fighter with the longer reach. And he used that throughout this fight by throwing some devastating kicks, with one of them hurting Couture bad. Regardless, Randy went on to win the controversial decision. His next matchup saw him fight fellow UFC Hall of Famer, Mark Coleman. Couture outstruck Mark in the first round before taking him down in the second where he finished the fight with a rear naked choke. Randy's most infamous fight was his next one at UFC 118 where he fought three times boxing world champion James Tony at heavyweight. He took James down right away before securing the arm triangle choke 3 minutes into the fight. Many people criticized the fight for being a freak show, but this win also made Couture the oldest man to win a fight in the UFC at the age of 47. Before Randy's next fight at UFC 129 against Loyoto Machida, he announced that it would be his final fight, and in front of a crowd of 55,000 plus people in Toronto, Canada, Machida knocked out Couture with a beautiful crane kick that also had Randy lose a tooth. In his post-fight interview, he confirmed that he was finally Finally done with fighting. So after a 14 year career where he went 19 and 11, won the UFC Heavyweight Championship three times, and captured the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship twice, and earned a whole bunch of accolades due to doing this as an old man, how good was Randy Couture actually? Now a record of 19 and 11 doesn't look impressive on paper, but Randy's career was different. 15 of his 30 career fights were for the UFC title, and 9 of those 15 title fights he won, which I think is absolutely wild. What this means is that Couture fought at the highest level of MMA for most of his career. What's even crazier is that he started at the age of 33 and was still a top fighter in his 40s. He was the king of the clinch. His Greco-Roman wrestling base helped him popularize his ever so effective dirty boxing that saw him pummel his opponents and wear them down. And this promoted fighters to engage in Couture's style which led to some memorable fights. But while in the clinch, he also threw heavy elbows and knees, took the fight to the ground when it was possible, or separated and began to throw heavy combos. He preferred to clinch his opponents against the cage as it gave him more leverage to attack in comparison to when he fought in a ring as he was unable to impose the same game plan as effectively. When on the ground, he barely looked for the submission as he preferred to finish the fight by strikes. But in general, he was effective in maintaining top control as he was really strong. And that strength really showed at light heavyweight where he was able to outmuscle all the younger guys. And even though he was a smaller man for most of his fights at heavyweight, he used his speed to his advantage by dodging strikes and landing some of his own. He was the perfect hybrid between heavyweight and light heavyweight. He became a two division champion before everyone started to do it. And many of his accomplishments accomplishments were when he was in his 40s. Outside of fighting, he's a really good color commentator and has appeared in multiple movies such as The Expandables. He is also very vocal in the treatment of fighters in MMA as he believed that they should receive better pay, health insurance, and a retirement plan. The biggest fight in Randy's career was a fight with Fedor Emelianenko. That could have been a classic had the UFC signed Fedor. It's really hard to say who would have won to be honest. If Fedor entered the promotion in 2007, he was beginning to enter the decline of his career. While Couture, who was close to leaving the UFC, came back and won the heavyweight championship for a third time and defended it. But what do you think? Also, I would consider Randy to be a top 5 all-time heavyweight, in the top 10 for light heavyweights, and top 15 for pound for pound greatest. But aside from all his career accomplishments, Randy was beloved by fans. I mean, how could you not root for the old dog who continued to come back with new tricks? My name is Keon and this was my take on how good Randy Couture actually was. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put it in the comments down below because I'd love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all out for now, so I'll see you on my next one.